Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime, the podcast for kids and their pop culture loving grown ups. And this is an inspiring story about a hidden hero of history. It's a beautiful day for a story, adventure and glory, new friends and old ones too. It's an excellent day to get swept away in a tale, so let us regale you. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Once Upon a Time's Music Hall of Fame. Tonight, we're holding our very prestigious, fancy, and funky Golden Records Ceremony. We're so excited to recognize groundbreaking music makers who rocked out to the beat of their own drums and changed the tune of music history. In preparation, I read Bill's board of chart toppers and... Wait, wait, wait. Bill's board? Do you mean the billboard charts? What? No. Wait. Oh, is that another thing from your realm? Well, yeah, the billboard charts calculate the most popular songs of the week. Oh, heavens no. (laughs) Bill is the duck that lives in George Washington Carver Park in Once Upon a Time's beautiful city of Litropia. Oh, yeah, Bill is the one who has all the vinyl records. He does have an extensive music collection, yes. You've probably seen him digging through the shelves at Howl at the Moon Records. Ah, Big Bad Wolf's Shop with the Bop, the Aroom with the Groove. That's right. Anyhow, Bill has a big bulletin board where he lists all of his favorite tunes from all over Once Upon a Time. And he also listens to songs from your homeland. Really? Yes, he's the one that gave me the idea to induct these groundbreaking music makers into our Music Hall of Fame today. Oh, well then. Thank you, Bill. (laughs) So, we have three musicians we're highlighting at our Golden Records ceremony. And we happen to have a very famous bird band with us. (gasps) No! Yes! Brilliant! The Branch Sisters sit very high on Bill's board of chart toppers. Well, I'm not surprised in the slightest. They've flown all the way in from the folktale forest to help us honor these marvelous music makers. Well, I cannot wait. So I shan't wait anymore. (laughs) Let's begin. Let's. First up, please welcome the one, the only, Twiggy Branch. Hi, everyone. I'm tweeting excited to fly on by and present a golden record to... Richie Valens! It's great to see you, Twiggy. Happy to see you, too, chickadees. I'm so ready to start tripping about a music maker who really makes me want to shake my tail feathers. Oh, please, Twiggy, tell us more. Mr. Valens was a guitarist, singer, and songwriter, and a pioneer of the Chicano rock movement. Ooh! What is that? Chicano rock started when Mexican-American youth were looking for new ways to express themselves and be seen. It is heavily influenced by Mexican-American culture. Tell us more. Richie Valens heard traditional mariachi music and flamingo guitar growing up, as well as R&B. A little birdie told me that R&B is also known as rhythm and blues. Anyways, this sparked his interest in making music of his own, starting at age five. Five? The great bird call to music came to me at a young age, too, so I can relate. Mr. Valens was encouraged by his father to take up guitar and trumpet, and then he also taught himself the drums. He was left-handed, but still mastered the traditional right-handed version of the guitar. A true talent. I'm right-handed, but I have not mastered guitar playing. (laughs) Oh, don't worry, Jonathan. Just say the word, and I'll give you some banjo lessons. Ooh, thanks, Reg. That's tweeting great, Reg and Jonathan. Now, continuing Mr. Valen's story. Starting in junior high, Mr. Valens would bring his guitar to school, singing and playing songs for his friends. 
When he was 16, he joined a local band called the Silhouettes. At first, he was the guitarist, and then took over the vocals when the lead singer left the band. A man of many abilities, and all while still in high school. Too true. Next up on the stage of this story, Bob Keen. He was the owner and president of a small record label called Delphi Records in Hollywood, California. He saw Mr. Valens play a Saturday morning matinee at a movie theater. That's right, Jonathan. Afterwards, he offered Mr. Valens a chance to audition, and from there, he signed Mr. Valens to his label. Which means that he made music exclusively for Mr. Keen, and got support recording, selling, and promoting his music in return. correct -a doodles Ah, yes. You know, I was signed to a record label myself, with my merry band of Bremen. Is that right, Reg? How fabulous! Oh, <laughs> shucks. Uh, when we were signed, we made our most popular record. Meow, that's what I call music. Uh, what did Mr. Valens create? After Mr. Valens was signed, he co-wrote some incredibly popular songs. His most influential tune was La Bamba. I'm always humming it to myself. <laughs> Not only was it a hit on the charts. On Bill's board? The pop charts from Jonathan's realm. Wow! La Bamba was the first hit sung entirely in Spanish, blending traditional Latin American music with rock. He was the first to successfully do this and inspired generations of musicians after him to adopt the style. I heard he would improvise and add new riffs to songs while he was playing live, keeping the audience tapping on their toes. He was truly a special musician, chickadees. He changed the course of rock and roll history, and I tweeting love getting to award him with a golden record today. Thank you so much for sharing the tale of Richie Valens with us tonight. My bloomin' pleasure, pals. I'll see you next time. I can't wait to learn about our next recipient. Well then, without further ado, the next musician receiving our golden record this evening is... Carol Kay. And to tell us more, please welcome <laughs> Olive Branch. Good evening, crooners. Fancy seeing so many fine feathered friends in this grand theater. Thank you for being here, Olive. We can't wait to hear about Carol Kay. Well, then let me lay down the tracks. Carol Kay is an incredibly formative bass guitar player and session musician. The bass guitar holds down the beat. You got it, crooner. And a session musician is someone who is hired to go into a music studio and record tracks for another musician. They could be hired to play guitar, bass, drums, vocals, and many other instruments. And you've got the groove, J-Man. Ms. K recorded for many famous musicians, including the Beach Boys. Frank Sinatra, Simon and Garfunkel, Stevie Wonder, The Supremes, The Temptations, and one of my personal heroes, the Barbara Streisand. Can you believe it? An impressive list. Isn't it, though? Ms. K's parents were professional musicians. Her mom gave her a steel string guitar at age 13. The very next year, at 14 years old, she began teaching guitar professionally and playing sessions in jazz clubs around Los Angeles. I'm in awe of the talent, the drive. The panache. Ooh, I couldn't have said it better myself, Olive. When did Ms. K begin her recording career? She was hired to play on Sam Cooke's recording of the song, Summertime and realized she could make a better living as a session musician. Her career took off after a famous producer heard her play the acoustic rhythm guitar on Richie Valens' track, La Bamba. No way. Yes way, Reg, the hedge with the edge. But you mentioned she played the bass. When did she switch instruments? In 1963, when a bass player failed to show for a session, she was asked to fill in on the instrument. That's how she learned that she preferred to play the bass. Oh, really? Why is that, Olive? 
She said it allowed her to play more creatively. And you know, crooners, I can really dig that. One has to let their artistic side flourish, you hear? Oh, do I ever? During her time as a session musician, Ms. K became the most in-demand bassist in Los Angeles. She is best known for her work as a member of the famous Wrecking Crew. Wrecking Crew? Uh, did they do a lot of construction work? Like Glimmer the Beaver? <laughs> Not quite, Reg. The Wrecking Crew was a collective of session musicians who were hired for numerous studio recordings in the 1960s and 70s. While they weren't well known outside of the music industry, they are now considered the most successful and influential session group in music history. I read somewhere that, at that time, it was also uncommon for a woman to be a session musician. You got that right. Ms. K was the only woman in the Wrecking Crew, in fact. She was a trailblazer, creating a path for future generations of session musicians. She inspired several other bassists who were her contemporaries as well, including Sir Paul McCartney. <gasps> Gasp! From the Beatles? Wait, how do you know about the Beatles? <laughs> Why, because of Bill and his board, of course. <laughs> of course. According to the New York Times, she played in 10,000 recording sessions. And now, at age 87, she teaches and mentors others in the ways of the bass guitar. What a legacy! I think it's really groovy that I get to present her with a golden record. Bravo! That's a wrap for your friend Olive. Ta-ta for now! See you later, Olive. And thanks for telling us about the colossal Carol Kay. Let's see... We've spoken to Twiggy Branch and Olive Branch, mm, so that leaves... Howdy, friends! Ah! Oh, Sally! Oh, you, you snuck up on us, Sally. Oops. I was just so excited to come talk to you two. This whole event is such a hoot! Welcome to our Golden Record Ceremony. Uh, who are you spotlighting today? Uh, what's that now? Uh, you sharing the story of a groundbreaking music maker as well? Oh, I am! <laughs> I was just happy as a lark to be here, and it completely slipped my mind that I'm presenting. Oh, dear. Well, it is my profound honor to be talking about the godmother of rock and roll, Sister Rosetta Tharp. The godmother of rock and roll, you say? That's right. Miss Tharp was a singer and guitarist. She was popular in the 1930s and 40s, and she put rock and roll on the map. Tell us more. Sister Rosetta Tharp came from a family of religious singers. She picked up the guitar at four years old, and at the age of six, she performed with her mother in churches around the South. Miss Tharp and her mother eventually settled in Chicago, where they continued performing spiritual music. As Miss Tharp grew up, she began fusing blues, New Orleans jazz, and gospel music into her plan. This would soon become her signature style. What a combination! Hmm, I'd say my style is a mixture of traditional hedgehog folk tunes and snazzy Reggie radicalness. <laughs> <laughs> what a hoot! Miss Tharp quickly became a music pioneer. She was the first recording star of gospel music, and her technique was revolutionary. As she was among the first recording artists to use heavy distortion on her electric guitar. Distortion is an effect you can put on your guitar to make it sound gritty or fuzzy, right? Fuzzy as a newborn chick. <laughs> Miss Tharp was at the forefront of making rock and roll an international sensation. She wrote about both religious and non-religious themes. Another groundbreaking moment for the art form. Now, in the past, Mr. Reg and I have learned a lot about segregation. And this was a time when people were separated due to their racial backgrounds. 
That's unfortunately right, Reg and Jonathan. As a black American, Miss Tharp did experience the effects of racial segregation. Despite crossing boundaries in music and performance and becoming a popular artist, she couldn't sleep in certain hotels on tour or eat at restaurants across cities. And there weren't many guitarists who were women at the time as well, so she had to overcome more obstacles in her male-dominated industry. Still, at the young age of 23, she joined the Cotton Club Review, a notable New York City venue, and recorded her first single. It was called Rock Me and exemplified the true fusion of gospel and rock and roll. Despite the world stacking the odds against her, she prevailed. Oh boy, did she! After World War II ended, she produced a famous spiritual single called Strange Things Happening Every Day, which was a reflection of the strange things that were taking place in the world. It became her most well-known song and the very first gospel song to make it onto the R&B Top 10 charts. There are folks who also say it was one of the very first rock and roll recordings. Huh. Uh, What is it, Jonathan? Well... Most of the time when folks talk about the founders of rock and roll, they mention other names. Don't I know it, my friend. But Miss Tharp was playing rock before most of those other big names. And she heavily influenced them, too. She inspired artists like Little Richard, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Eric Clapton, and more. She was the blueprint. She did not receive the recognition she deserved until recent years, and now more and more people are learning about her incredibly formative contributions to music history. I love to hear it. Me too, Reg. (laughs) Anywho, she was finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018 and has received many other honors, including, wait for it, Being pictured on, are you with me, a 32-cent commemorative stamp. I know! As a stamp collector myself, I also appreciate this a great deal. And now, we're honored to induct her into Once Upon a Time's Music Hall of Fame. Thank you for stopping by, Sally. Let's hear it one more time for the Branch Sisters and all of the groundbreaking music makers whose stories we've heard today. This has been a spectacular time, Jonathan. And now I have so many amazing artists to add to my playlist. We'll be dancing for days. Just how I like it. Now, let's see. Uh, Where did I put those headphones in? Reg and I want to encourage all of our listeners who have been part of our Golden Records ceremony (laughs) to go create your own playlists. Check out these hidden heroes who've conducted the course of music history and composed the melodies and bass lines that have stuck with us through time. Now, take us away, Reg. Reg? He's already listening to music. Right then. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you all, and... Uh, We'll see you on the dance floor. (laughs) This has been a John and Character production. Today's Hidden Heroes of History story was written by Molly Murphy. Special thanks to the Branch Sisters, Twiggy, performed by Monique Hafen adams Olive, performed by Kristen Schmitz, and Sally, performed by Molly Murphy. All other characters were performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Studio Recordings. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalestorytime.com. Now, Go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next, once upon a time.